Good morning. Welcome to our online service today. My name is Chris Hargraves. I'm the Associate Minister for Stretton Parish, and it's good to be with you. And um, we continue to pray for our brother Steve as he slowly, hopefully, recovers from his illness. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So we think of our family today and uh, this weekend, a new version, a new edition of Contact is available, giving you information on all that's going on in the next few weeks. And I draw your attention to the Parish Vision Weekend, which will incorporate the inspirational speaker, Chris Landau, speaking at several of our services and also our annual parochial church meeting for the parish. All the details are in contact. And uh, on the Saturday night, the 20th uh, of April, there will be a fun night, family fun night for all ages uh, in the parish centre with refreshments, quizzes, and just generally a good time to get together with one another. So do sign up for that if you're able to attend. And so we turn to our reading for today. And our reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled and why do, you, why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he'd said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So our reading for today, those great events that occurred after the resurrection of Jesus and David will be coming to speak to us about um, how this passage has spoken to him. Uh, in a few moments. Following that, there will be a time of worship and then we'll come back together for prayers. Our reading today is from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. And this is Jesus appearing to his disciples. Now we perhaps need to have a quick refresh and a think of where the disciples are finding themselves as we begin uh, looking at this reading. The last the disciples would have heard, Jesus had been crucified. He had been buried and he was dead. So at this point in our reading, they would have been incredibly surprised to see Jesus appear in front of them and say, peace be with you. As we hear, they are startled and frightened and they thought they had seen a ghost. And he said, Jesus said, why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet, it is I myself. Touch me and see, a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. So clearly at this point, something incredible has happened and the disciples are not believing 
As much as they are overjoyed and amazed, they can't quite believe that Jesus is here with them. So Jesus asks, do you have anything I can eat? And then he's given a piece of broad fish, which he takes and eats in their presence. And Jesus says, this is what I told you whilst I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Now, it's an interesting, uh, an interesting verse, verse 45. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Now, I'm not sure if this is a sp in a spiritual sense or if it's simply just him explaining. As we see in verse 46 onwards, he told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And the repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Jesus is making it very clear. Everything he had told them is coming to pass. There is no coincidence. There's no fluke. This has been the plan from the very beginning. And I think he's trying to stress that one, he is real. He is resurrected. He is risen again. He is before them. But this is their specific point in time. This is their time and they are witnesses to these things. They've seen all these things culminate in that very moment, which is astounding, unbelievable. You thought that your Lord had been had been killed, was dead and was gone. Yet here he is in front of you. Not only have you got your Lord and your friend, your confidant, the person you traveled with back again with you. Not only that, but you were witness to scripture being fulfilled right in front of your eyes. But in all of this, there's a key takeaway from this. And it is the sense that there is nothing the disciples could have done in that period of time when they thought Jesus had died and when he had appeared again in front of them. They simply had to wait on God's timing. Now, sometimes uh, in our Christian life, we can perhaps feel frustrated that things aren't happening as quick as we would like them. We want to speed the process up. We want to rush ahead. And it can sometimes perhaps appear to others that when we're waiting on God, praying and seeing what's going to happen next, what God has planned for us, like we're not doing very much. But we see here that there are periods of time where there is simply nothing to do but to wait and to be still and to be quiet and to have faith and to trust that God is working through his plans. As we've seen in our, in our verses today, Jesus said, this is what I told you whilst I was with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. And then Jesus says, then you are witness to these things. This is a really uh, useful passage. If we find ourselves in a period of waiting on God, of wondering what's next for us if we're feeling frustrated or if we're wanting to try and get ahead everything is in God's hands and sometimes there is nothing more that we can do but simply wait and trust in God's plan and his purpose and in his timing so it's my hope that as we move through this Easter period we can have those moments where we can find some silence and rest in God and his presence and trust in his timing. Amen. So much to be consoled
And so we come to our prayers. And as we pray, it's not just the prayers that are spoken, but the prayers that are spoken in our hearts that God listens to. So please pray with me as you will. May God be glorified now as we commit ourselves to the work of prayer, interceding for those in all kinds of need. In our worship and our openness to the spirit of life, in the church's longing and outreach, in the priests, the people, in all seekers and honest doubters, in all this, may God be glorified. In the welfare programmes and peacemaking missions, in the struggle to uphold justice, in the aid given to the hungry and homeless. In all this, may God be glorified. In the loving and costly commitment of mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, daughters and sons, in the determination to forgive and forget, in all the lives shared and cherished, in all this, may God be glorified. in the work of caring, comforting and healing, in the daily patient struggle with pain and weakness and in the practical good-humoured caring, 
in all this. May God be glorified. In the twilight years and the facing of death, in lives well lived and now breaking into eternity, in all this, may God be glorified. In the freedom offered through forgiveness, in the joy of resurrection life, in the hope of eternity, in all this, may God be glorified. And we gather those prayers as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so as we go into a new week, may the Lord be with you and we hear his blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, who is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love and care for, now and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Until next time, God bless.